warm greetings on this wonderful evening. We take pleasure in welcoming all of you to this grand event that covers a book release and a presentation on quantum nation, the future of computing. As we stand on the brink of technological revolution, quantum computing promises to refine our approach to solving complex problems and unlocking new frontiers in science and industry. India's national quantum mission is a strategic initiative aimed at harnessing this potential, positioning the nation as a global leader in quantum technology. Join us as we delve into how India is preparing to make significant strides in quantum innovation and what it means for the future of technology and industry. We invite the chairperson events, IEEE CS Madras, Mr. H. R. Mohan to deliver the welcome address. Greetings and good evening to one and all. On behalf of the organizing units, IEEE Computer Society, Computer Society of India and ACM, I have great pleasure in extending a warm welcome to our esteemed guest, Mr. Ajay Choudhury and Dr. Vector Subramanyam, the author of the book being released at our forum. Members and my colleagues from the organizing units, the participants who have joined the meeting through Google Meet and those watching the proceedings through the YouTube streaming. After AI, quantum computing is drawing global attention and so also in India. With a funding of about 1 billion US dollar, the National Quantum Mission has been established, which will coordinate the research and startup ecosystem in this area. The book, Quantum Nation, India, after AI, quantum computing is drawing global attention and so also in India. With a funding of about 1 billion US dollar, the National Quantum Mission has been established, which will coordinate the research and startup ecosystems in this area. The book, Quantum Nation, India's Leap into the Future, has come out at an appropriate time. The book explores the India's journey and potential in the field of quantum computing. It delves into the foundational principles of quantum mechanics and their role in the universe, setting the stage for understanding quantum computing. The book also highlights India's strategic national quantum mission and the country's rich pool of quantum talent. By reflecting on India's 60 years of uh, journey in classical computing, it draws a valuable lesson to be applied to the quantum era while also examining the challenges and mixed excesses of the Indian hardware and semiconductor industries. The book provides an in-depth look at the quantum computing stack, quantum hardware, and the transformative applications of quantum computing across various sectors. It also explores the emerging quantum startup ecosystem in India, the struggles faced by the startup founders and the importance of transforming skills and expertise into economic growth. By showcasing successful examples of ecosystem building in India and discussing the critical role of industry, Quantum Nation envisions India's future in quantum era, aiming for a leading position in quantum technology and its significant impact on the country's development. We at IEEE Computer Society, Madras, CSA Chennai, and ACM Chennai are extremely happy to formally launch this important book today by none other than the chair of India's quantum mission, Mr. Ajay Choudhury. Now it is my pleasure to formally introduce the chief guest and the author of the book. Mr. Choudhury is known to me for about 45 years when he had co-founded the HCL in 1976 and was heading the Hindustan Computers Limited Madras region. My initial interaction, yes. initial interaction with uh, Mr. Ajay in 1918 was regarding an in-house computer system at Seishai Paper Mill, he wrote, which after evaluation settled for the uh, HCL System 4, the first hard disk-based Indian mini computer developed by HCL. Mr. Ajay Choudhury is a visionary pioneer who co-founded HCL in the year 1976 with a dream of using the microprocessor to change the world. He led HCL's expansion into Singapore in 1980, creating a successful business spanning Asia, China, and Hong Kong. Today, HCL is valued at an impressive US, US $50 billion. In 1995, Mr. Ajay Choudhury took over HCL Infosystem and tuned it into a leader in hardware products, systems, integration, and mobile telephony. Under its leadership, it grew into which is uh, 12,000 crores, that is about 1.6 billion organization. Mr. Ajay Choudhury has played a leading role in establishing the electronics industry in India, serving on government committees since 1999, 
in 2009, he cleared, he said the uh, uh, task force for the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, making recommendations that form the foundation of the electronic policy. He is the chairman of Mission Govern Governing Body of National Quantum Mission of India, distinguished fellow of Niti Ayo and fellow at the Indian National Academy of Engineers. He has been nominated to the advisory board of India Semiconductor Mission. In 2011, Mr. Ajay Choudhury was awarded the Padma Bhushan for his contribution to the IT electronics industry. He has received many accolades, including Lifetime Achievement Award by Electronic Sector Skills Council of India in 2024. As an institution builder, Mr. Ajay helped set up IIT Hyderabad and IIIT Nair Raipur. His philanthropic efforts include Swayam Trust, focusing on education and women's empowerment. Mr. Ajay has invested in over 50 startups and co-founded Epic Foundation in 2021 to promote self-sufficiency in electronics. His memory has just aspired, notes on technology, entrepreneurship, and the future is published by Harper Collins India. Our hearty welcome to Mr. Ajay Choudhury for this event. Coming to the author of the book, Quantum Nation, being released today, Dr. L. Venkatesh Subramaniam is an again no stranger to us. As the editor of IWE India Council newsletter, I had the opportunity of interacting with him during 2017 and 18 for articles in the emerging area of quantum computing. She was highly supportive. Dr. V. L. is currently the IBM Quantum India lead with a PhD from IIT Delhi and a 26 year tech career. He has earned 34 patents, published 150 research papers, and received the title IBM Master Inventor. Dr. Venkat is dedicated to pushing India into the forefront of quantum computing. He, has also, he also mentors IIT Delhi, bridging the theory and practical applications. Recently, his book, Quantum Nation, India's uh, Leap into the Future, which is uh, being released, hit the bestseller uh, list in the Amazon India. As the head of IBM Quantum India, his mission is to help establish India as a leader in quantum computing technologies. We are extremely happy to launch his book in a, to our members and other participants. Dr. Venkatesh Subramanyam, after the launch of the book, will deliver a presentation on quantum nation future of computing. Now let me request Mr. Ajay Choudhury to formally release the book Felicitate the author and address the gathering on the India's quantum mission and opportunity ahead of us in the hardware areas. Over to Mr. Ajay, please. Well, I'm sitting here with this book. Yes, sir. Just and, hold uh, I, hold I'm just me. opening it to show you that it is being launched. Yeah. Just okay. So, so although it is, uh, it is not physical, but virtually at least I'm launching it properly. Yeah. And, uh, what I would like to mention is that uh, Venkat came and met me a few months ago. Sir, sir, one more. Just can you show the book once again? Just Yes, uh, this is the book that I was uh, showing everybody. One minute. Sir. One minute. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So Venkat came and met me and uh, gave me a copy of the book. And... Uh, I got to know him then and understood his uh, background and understood uh, what he was trying to do in India and his dedication to working with the Indian industry. His illustrious career with IBM has been phenomenal. And as all of you have just noticed that he has a great capability in, uh, in technology and especially in quantum computing. Well. This year, early in January, uh, we started to uh, formally work on the National Quantum Mission. And uh, within the next uh, seven days, we issued the first uh, uh, RFP for all the scientists and researchers in the country to apply and uh, get uh, and tell us about what they want to do in different areas of uh, quantum technologies. So basically, the objective of the quantum mission is to set up four key hubs uh, in the country. One in the area of quantum computing, 
The other area is quantum communication. Third area is sensors and devices. And the fourth area is materials. So our objective at this stage was to invite whoever, all the scientists and researchers in this area uh, to let me. us know about. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I have a doubt. I have a doubt. Uh, can I ask? Can I ask? Hello. I have a doubt. Uh, can I ask? Maybe you later. Ask later. Yeah. Yeah. Please, uh, you post your query on the chat box, man. OK. Man. So fundamentally, having uh, started this uh, in January, and uh, when we actually put out the RFP, we, we discovered that there were more than 350 responses, which was fantastic. And uh, previous to that, I had come to know that there are close to about 650, 700 researchers in this area. And we felt that if we were able to uh, uh, give different uh, parts of what we wanted to do to different, uh, or, uh, different organizations, we would be able to get to the targets that we have set for ourselves. So the objective of the mission is that in eight years, we want to make a quantum computer, which would be around 1,000. Uh, qubits and similarly in in communications we have a target to go to 2500 kilometers and so on so in addition to the department of science and technology under which the national quantum mission comes uh three other agencies are also involved in this mission department of space department of defense uh drdo and also department of atomic energy so our objective from day one has been to involve all three and uh, ensure that we have we don't have any areas where we actually overlap between various people who are working in, in this area. The second area that we started to look at very early days is to find out how many startups are, in, are there in this area. So when we actually went out to check, there were close to 45, 50 startups who were already working on quantum technologies. So uh, we invited uh, all of them to write into us. And then we actually sat down and talked to about 14 top startups to understand what they were doing. Post that, we created a special package for startups. We're quite clear that this is a very deep research area. And therefore, here, small amounts of money will not work. So we decided that we will give grants from about one to two crores up to 25 crores. And uh, this is the first time in the government that we have such a scheme where this kind of money is will be given for startups. So we've actually launched the startup program and we are expecting responses by middle of September. Post that we will, within the next two to three months, we will decide and uh, give away the grants. So our objective would be to get it going quickly. In the meantime, we had decided that we will finalize the four T hubs. We've actually done all the work on that. We were absolutely on target. We finished that job in middle of August. We are currently waiting for the government to find formally uh, approve. And uh, any day when the minister is ready, we would be able to announce that. So that will get the uh, ball rolling with the four T hubs. Each of these T hubs will be headed by a CEO and they will all be section eight companies and their board will have people both from the scientific community and the business community. So the whole objective would be to ensure that it works like a proper organization. The third area that we have been working on is to create manpower. So we have actually signed an agreement with the AICTE and our objective is to get an MS in uh, quantum started next year. In addition, uh, we are also looking at starting a minor in quantum in the BTEC area. And thirdly, uh, in addition to all of this, uh, an MS in quantum has already been launched by ICER in Pune. So it's this year itself we've started. Our objective over the years would be to create large amount of manpower for this area which is huge shortage globally. And uh, fourth area that we have been working on is to involve the industry also into the quantum program. So we 
I wrote in to NASCOM and NASCOM then uh, requested seven companies to come and meet us. And we've had a very good discussion with them. And we discovered that some of these uh, software system integrators, et cetera, are already working on quantum. So that's really where we are at this stage of the quantum mission. And uh, we are hoping that uh, uh, we'll have the uh, four T hubs operational pretty soon. And then we will be sending off all the grants that we are, all the funding that we have thought of for each of the projects. And uh, we will, we also have a coordination cell that's been created in IIT Kanpur located at Noida. So that coordination cell will actually start to review the performance of all the T-Hubs and the various projects that we are handing out. So that's really where we are. And uh, I happened to uh, read the book which uh, Venkat had given to me. And I find that uh, this is the kind of book that is required for people to really, really understand what is quantum technologies. Even I learned a lot reading this book. And uh, when I, after having read this book, I uh, took a trip to <clears throat> TIFR, where the first uh, quantum computer in India was being built. And I met uh, Professor Vijay Raghavan, and uh, he gave me a very good view of what they have worked on. And recently, about two weeks ago, <coughs> our first six qubit computer, uh, quantum computer, was tested and approved by DRDO. So that's really where we are. It's a long way to go, but uh, I'm very pleased to here announce the launch of this book because this is something that uh, people would love to understand. This is a technology that's not easy to understand because, as they say, this is this is really spooky physics. But uh, with this, uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ajay Chaudhary, for your uh, launch of the book, as well as giving some uh, overview about the quantum machine and where we are heading and what type of directions you know, we need to follow to become pioneers in the quantum field. Thank you very much for your time, and we really appreciate sir, your presence. We are extremely happy about your presence. So uh, now uh, I'd like to request Dr. Venkat to uh, kindly present about the topic quantum nation feature of uh, quantum computing. Over to uh, Dr. Vinkit. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, thank you, Mohan, sir, for arranging this. And uh, Ajay, sir, for you know giving this, you know, joining this platform and honoring me. I'm really grateful that you gave me this opportunity. So today I'll talk about the book and what is in it and why did I write it? Okay, so I'll so share. Are, will be, no, will you be sharing your I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing. Yes. I'm just sharing. Yeah, I hope my screen is visible. Yes. Are you okay? Very good. Okay, so the book has been launched. Uh, the book actually came out into the market about three and a half months back, and I have really been overwhelmed by the response that I've been getting. People have been writing to me. People have been, you know, telling me, asking me questions about it. So. The reason I wrote this book, and it's written in very simple language, actually, I wrote it because I felt that this was India's opportunity. And this is how you know we can become a developed nation, how we can take the lead in technology. So this is the first chapter. And in each chapter, I've given some sayings. And I believe this saying is actually very relevant for all of us you know as a young citizen of india armed with technology and love for my nation i realize a small aim is a crime so here with the national quantum mission and with quantum we really have a 
big, big, big opportunity. And I'm, you know, really happy that uh, Sri Ajay Chaudhary ji is releasing this book because I read his book, Just Aspire. And that's really what, you know, the, the whole mission is about that, I feel, where we have to aspire, aim big, and go out there and achieve our aims. And this is a beautiful opportunity. And today, what I'm going to do is tell you why we have this huge opportunity in front of us. Okay. This is one of, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, I feel. And this is something which can turn us into a big technology player around the world. But to begin with, I, I often get the question, are quantum computers real devices? Can you, are, do they even exist? Or are they just on paper? Are they illusionary? You know, are, are, have they been built yet? So the first thing I want to tell you is that online, you can actually Working on complex problems, problems like where you want to understand high energy physics, dark matter, relative. In quantum computers, the special thing is that they use quantum mechanics, and all of these processes actually use quantum mechanics. So Classical computers, our today's supercomputers, laptops, none of them is very good at doing these problems. And that's where quantum computers come in. So can we go to the next slide, please? So this is you know, how quantum has been developing over the years. Uh, some of you may know that Bose-Einstein the research paper got published about 100 years back from now. But also, very importantly, physicists like Einstein, Einstein in his 1935 paper said that we do not understand entanglement sufficiently today. And hence, it is not something which is really happening. But the 2022 Physics Nobel Prize was actually for showing entanglement. And that's one of the processes that the quantum computer uses to do its processing. So there has been a lot of debate, a lot of work that has actually gone on before quantum computers became a reality in the last decade. And since then, a lot of acceleration has happened. And now we are in an era where we can say that quantum computers have actually reached a hardware level where we are beginning to do things with them, beginning to show utility using these quantum computers. Going to the next slide. OK, so through this, you know, as the IBM quantum lead, you know, I've come in, come across many of our leaders today. And this was a saying from Patanjali when I was sitting in the Meiti office, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. I saw this saying on the wall, okay, when you are inspired by, a, by some great purpose, some extraordinary project, all your thoughts break their bonds, your mind transcends limitations. Your consciousness expands in every direction. And you find yourself in a new, great, and wonderful world. Dormant forces, faculties, and talents become alive. And you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you ever dreamt yourself to be. So let's go to the next slide. I want to say something about our leaders who are today leading the national quantum mission. So this slide actually talks about 
some of our leaders who are leading this quantum mission. And that saying which I showed you by Patanjali actually applies to all these people. You know, there was this debate a few months back when Narayan Murthy said that, you know, we Indians should work 70 hours a week. And actually, I can tell you, each one of these people probably only takes 70 hours for their personal time. They're actually putting in 100 plus hours into the national quantum mission. So I want to take this short opportunity to introduce some of these people. So one is Dr. Ajay Sood. He's the principal scientific advisor. Some of you may know that there is the Sood effect, which is named after him. He's a renowned professor. And now he's leading the National Quantum Mission. So I've met him a few times. And what really comes across is you know, his passion to ensure that we in India develop leading technologies in quantum. The other people are Dr. Abhay Karandikar, who is the DST secretary. And you know, since the time he came, I've, I've seen that the National Quantum Mission has become a very open and transparent process, you know. So, so he took over sometime last year or something. And since then, I've seen that the National Quantum Mission, whatever happens there, it sort of comes out into the public domain. And then JBV Reddy, he's the mission director. And, you know, I luckily, I somehow fate or whatever, you know, the first day he was taking over the quantum program, I happened to be sitting there in that office and we met and we started talking about quantum and how it should be progressing. And now today, you know, he's at that time, he was just beginning to learn what is quantum. And now he's one of the experts driving this. And of course, Dr. Ajay Chaudhary, you know, so... Uh, He's here amongst us today, and re I'm really grateful that he joined. So he has actually been there, done it. And now I'm really happy that he's actually leading this program because whatever he succeeded in doing in, at HCL and with our IT industry, this is exactly what we need. This kind of scaling is what we need. And he heads the you know, the mission governing board of the National Quantum Mission. Okay, so these are some of the key people. And I, through this book, I also wanted to introduce some of these people to, the, to, to India to say that, you know, today we are progressing in a direction where we want to be leaders. And these are our people who are actually leading us there. So can we go to the next slide? So I, I'll not go into this. Can we go to the next slide? Because Dr. Chaudhary. So today, there are 33 countries which have national programs in quantum computing. If you talk to intelligence agencies, you talk to strategists, you talk to policymakers, many of them will tell you that the country that takes the lead in quantum will actually lead technologically for several decades. And that's the reason why 33 countries, more than any other technology area, quantum, 33 countries have national missions on quantum technologies. And the reason is this, that this is an exponential technology. If we are able to crack this, it will lead us to be able to solve unsolved problems and problems which our classical or today's computers, the best supercomputers, even if Moore's law continues for the next several years, we will still not be able to solve some of these problems like molecular modeling, like high energy physics. So all of these are areas which we cannot solve able to crack something like the quantum. Can we go to the next slide, please? OK. So 
what are where are we placed in all of this so the biggest thing that india today has is talent okay talent and i'll give you evidence for this i told you there are 33 national missions running saying that they want to do quantum several of these missions if you talk to them they will tell you that we will get our talent from india and if you go to the next slide i'll talk about some of this talent right now so there are ibm systems which give you 10 minutes of free time and where are we seeing this usage coming from going to the next slide uh, so on the next slide we will see that there is actually on our IBM systems today, we are seeing that India is one of the places where users, not just from our large cities, but from small, small cities. Okay. One big surprise for me was Cochin University of Science and Technology is among the top four users of this quantum computer from India. And I went and checked. They, they don't, they're not even teaching a course on quantum computing there. So there is a huge interest among our youngsters. We ran a program on NPTEL, 15,000 students registered, and half of them, 7,000 plus of them, were actually 12th class students. So there is something really, you know, inspiring our youngsters. In spite of not having regular programs in quantum computing, quantum computing today is only taught in about 10 colleges, OK? 10 colleges in India teach quantum computing, some of our IITs, ICERs, and others. But somehow, we have managed to produce talent which is beyond any other countries today. And this is a McKinsey report which pointed out that India, as a single country, has you know, the largest number of graduates in quantum technology relevant fields. OK. And the evidence for this, as I said, we are seeing it on our IBM systems. There are more quantum certified engineers from India. There are more participants from India in quantum hackathon, summer schools, and all of that run by IBM than any other country, even more than the US. The, learning materials from IBM are getting downloaded from India more than anywhere else today. The YouTube channel of Kiskit is watched by more people from India than anywhere else. So all of this is pointing out that there is something special happening in India, and we need to utilize this talent. You know, the talent which is there, we need to channel it. Going to the next slide. I want to also point out our history. You know, we were one of the first countries. A handful of countries in 1960 had built quantum, uh, had built computers. And one of those countries was India. TIFR, going to the next slide, uh, TIFR had built India's computer in 1960. And we just heard we from. Slightly not okay. Huh, now we should get to it. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the correct slide. Ajay Chaudhary just mentioned that TIFR again has built India's first quantum computer, the six qubit computer, which has been tested by DRDO. Again, TIFR has built India's first quantum computer. But out of these three, you know, in 62, we had built germanium semiconductors. We were able to produce those. In 1984, Semiconductor Limited was up and functioning. 1987 only TSMC came up. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company came up in 1987. Godfrey, advance, advance the slide, Godfrey. Yeah, this one is OK, sir. This We are on this slide. And in 1963, we had, you know, procured the first computer and professors in IIT Kanpur had started teaching it. This year is 2024. And as you know, today we are not, you know, we are a software nation. So the 
efforts that IIT Kanpur began, we are on top there. But our indigenous computer, indigenous semiconductor efforts did not yet result in this big industry which we have in software. So if we go to the next slide, uh, Godfrey, sir. Yeah. So you can see here that this is sort of drawing out the timeline. So as I said, by 63, we had semiconductors in India. We had built a computer. We had software. But it was only in software that we really took off. Why? Because we actually built a local industry on it. We had HCL, we had TCS, we had Infosys, and all these companies actually build a local industry. So even though we had talent in every area, whether it was hardware, whether it was semiconductor, whether it was software, it was only in software that we built a huge industry. And today we have a 245 billion industry, IT industry in India, primarily because you know, there were these efforts. So if you go to the next slide, I just want to talk about IIT Kanpur. Okay, so IIT Kanpur, next slide. Yes, so in IIT Kanpur, there were these two professors, Professor Rajaraman, Professor Mahabala. The, the I, IBM system came there. They started teaching courses on these programming courses. And who came and took these courses? FC Kohli was there taking along with you know his senior leadership they sat there through these courses and they actually you know were listening to these professors and as we know fc kohli went on to start tcs naren murthy 1967 the second batch of their masters program in in computing computer science he was a student and he went on of course to found 1981 Infosys. So this is just one institution. But these were the seeds that got laid where professors were teaching. And then an industry got built around it. And this is exactly what we need to do in quantum, where not only do we need the professors in the National Quantum Mission to you know, lead with new research and development, but we also need the startups. We also need the industry to come in. And if we go to the next slide, so here is, you know, Sri Ajay Chaudhary, he's leading this now. And he is, as you all know, is known as the father of hardware in India. Okay. So in 1978, along with Apple, we had actually built indigenous microcomputers. Okay, this was done by HCL. They were pioneers, but of course, you know, we had our, you know, policies and other things did not aid this hardware industry to come up. I think that's another discussion, and Ajay Chaudhary can tell us more about it later. But in quantum, you know, we need to have the pioneers like Sri Ajay Chaudhary, the young Ajay Chaudhary's of today, they need to be given that opportunity so that not only in software algorithms and things in quantum, but also in the hardware, we are able to build an industry here in India. Going to the next slide. So here, if you look at this, you know, this is the quantum stack, okay? At the bottom is the processor. And this is what Dr. Vijay Raghavan at TIFR has built right now, a six qubit superconducting, you know, processor is what he has built, okay? Now this, the in the National Quantum Mission, not only superconducting, but we are also supporting trapped ions, photonic, and many other technologies. And on top of this, processor is not the only thing. If you look at your laptop today, Intel makes some money, but a lot of the other money is made by the people who are making the rest of the motherboard, the, the memory, TSMC makes a lot of money out of it. So there are peripherals also where we need to focus. So 
processor is one aspect, but peripherals, which includes the refrigeration, the control systems, the amplifiers, the microwaves, all of these also need to be taken care of. Today, the cost per qubit is about $10,000. That needs to come down 100x. And how will that happen? By ensuring that you know, the peripherals are also shrunk in size and also their cost comes down. So both cost and size needs to come down. Just like in the 60s, the computers used to fill rooms. To today, quantum computers are large in size. They need to come down. You know, they need to shrink. And the National Quantum Mission is exactly going to be doing that. On top of that is the middleware, software, applications, algorithms. This has been India's traditional strength. This is where our HCL, Infosys, TCS are all working in. And this is an area where we have natural strengths. And we are starting out already as leaders, already with a lot of talent here. So these upper layers of the computing stack of quantum, we it's, it's for us to just take it and become leaders. The lower layers, we need to put in a lot of effort. And that's where the national quantum mission across all of this computing stack is going to be working on. Going to the next slide. So there are, you know, as I said, it is not enough for just our professors and universities to be working on it. We, you know, the father of Pentium, Vinod Dham, Indian, the father of uh, fiber optics, Kapani, Indian, the Millennium Prize this year went to an Indian. They all studied in India. They all did their undergraduation in India. They went out. They had to go out. Why? Because we did not have an industry in those areas like semiconductors, fiber optics, and all of that. Our goal now should be to build that industry. We need to build a local industry so that founders like these are able to start an industry in India, take all the research which comes out, all the talent which is coming out of our IITs, ICERs, IAC, TIFR, and all of that, and ensure that we build a local industry. Going to the next slide. So one of the things, you know, I don't know how many of you know, uh, Sam Altman, the founder of uh, OpenAI, he dropped out of college in the second year. Okay. Now, I'm pointing out Pranab Datta's story here. Why? Because, you know, Pranab Datta is a PhD. He's, a, he, he's an expert in quantum technologies. And it is people like him that we need to support to ensure that, you know, they are able to start their, and he's founded this startup called GDQ Labs out of Iser Pune. And we need, you know, one sad thing I, I heard from him, okay. He started out, when he started out, I heard him say, I'm going to build an iron trap quantum computer. Six months later, I talked to him. He said, sir, sorry, I, I, I don't think I'm going to get the funding. Right now, I've scaled down my dreams. I'm going to build a, a, you know, a sensor out of using the same technology that can be used to build a computer. I don't have the funding for that. but So he's working hard. But what I'm trying to say is that we need to support our youngsters. We need to be able to give them that opportunity where they are able to take our technologies and build out something out of that. Going to the next slide. So. Again, you know, this is talking about BC funding. I don't think there is anything, you know, we don't know here. But the good news, going to the next slide, the good news is that now the National Quantum Mission is going to the, okay, sorry, this slide is, okay, I changed the slide. 
that's fine so what i want to tell you is that till september 15th there is a call out for proposals startup proposals from dst and i hub quantum technology foundation go search on the internet or reach out to me the government wants to support startups it wants to give funding to startups and the call for your proposals is out right now this is the first call there will be more calls later on but here is an opportunity for startup founders for youngsters to actually put their take their dreams and make it a reality going to the next slide and then next slide we also need to bring industry into this okay it's very 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 important right now there are less than 10 companies which are doing quantum in india but the good news is there are at least 40 more which are interested in looking at quantum and this is our opportunity to also pull them in to make them explore quantum and ensure that a national industry in quantum comes up going to the next slide so there are some very good examples from you know incubators which have been very successful for example you should go and visit the iit madras research park 300 plus startups already incubated they have a target of incubating 100 startups this year many of these are in the first quantum startup was incubated out of iit madras in 2016 qno labs founded by you know some professors like anil prabhakar from iit madras and some young people today they have moved out of iit madras moved to i you know uh, bangalore they have an office there they are actually producing products today world class products in you know uh, qkd quantum key distribution and areas like that i know we are running out of time here the last slide you know i want to point out one very important thing here you know amazon flipkart two companies that do the same thing you know amazon was founded in 1994 by a 30 year old bezos okay 2007 flipkart was founded in india by the two bansals 25 years old youngsters just out of college you know both of these they 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 found it why did flipkart come out 10 15 years after amazon and according to me the reason is they both needed internet to to be successful by 1993 there were 10 million users of internet in the us and as a result when amazon came their people were able to purchase using amazon the purpose of amazon was to sell products online in india when did we reach that 10 million penetration we reached it about 10 years later and that's one of the main reasons why you know technology penetration takes time and today you know once internet took off in india you can see how much you know progress we have made the whole digital stack no other country has built that we have built it so if we are able to give these technologies in the hands of youngsters including quantum technologies and this is one of the goals of japan to give 10 million users of quantum by 2030 i have not seen that as in any of the other missions but i believe this has to be one of our goals which is to get quantum computing into the hands of all the people we can because that's how innovation takes place internet it came out in 1983 did the founders think that the the people who invented internet did they think that we'll be doing zoom calls now did they think that you know we will have amazon we will have uh, uber ola all of these things the founders of the technology can never envision 
what can be done with that technology the founders can only ensure that it give it is given in the hands of thousands of youngsters and millions of youngsters and today remember i told you india is ahead in terms of quantum computing usage okay and we need to build on top of that and this book is really about putting all of these stories together so that youngsters who read it are able to understand where quantum is how they can contribute and then the rest of it i believe is national quantum mission and all of us you know experienced people in the industry mentoring them helping them to achieve big things so thank you so much i'm really grateful you gave me this opportunity and sorry you know my internet broke i'm in a hotel uh, here sorry about that uh, but thank you so much thank you thank you sir sir few questions from the participants uh there's a question from uh garob banerji actually uh he is working in quantum research and his question is uh rpf or public uh like the uh, it is a request for public sir rfp uh yes uh, rfp for request public, for public. Like, those publicly accessible or all are kept secret that's the first question so rfp is uh, available to anybody to respond and of course uh, there is a time limit that is given so when we put out the rfp in january there was a time limit given and we had to get all the proposals within that period this is normal practice where uh, a transparent methodology is put into place we have done the same thing for startups the last date for that is 15th of september another one more question what architecture are we using for 6 qubit is it uh, superconducting qubit it is superconducting but as i said other architectures other qubit technologies are also being supported ion trap uh, photonic uh, semiconductor many of these are also being supported under the national quantum mission but the first computer that has come out of india is the superconducting qubits uh he asked one more thing it says we have crossed a lots of hurdles to get success in quantum and make india as product nation sir that's that's not a question okay okay okay, okay. okay. yeah but, but i agree we need to make india a product nation across the stack you know i told you about the stack where there is at the bottom there is the qubit technologies then there are the peripherals then comes the software middleware all of that in all of these you know there is an opportunity for india to take the lead and in some of these there is already an in existing industry the top layers especially like hcl infosys tcs they are already working in these areas and they can worldwide they can take leadership in these areas and uh, sir few questions are given during the registration uh, mr agar agar ga murji is a student he has uh, posted is there any clarity on tentative dates for the dispersal of funds for the project under ags of mqm yes uh, if you are a startup and you have applied for uh, funding within 3 months it will be dispersed so another question uh, madhusudanan is also a student future job opportunity and funding internship in the field of quantum is there any future of job opportunity and funding in terms of sir funding internship in the field of quantum yes certainly in fact ibm i am hiring for my team in india i know tcs hires i know lti mine tree hires i know hcl hires all of these companies are hiring in addition the national quantum mission is also going to you know skill people and it is also going to hire junior research fellows senior research fellows post docs phd's students so all of this you know there is going to be an industry that's going to stand up 
in the next few years within this decade actually that's going to come up as a matter of fact there's such a large shortage of talent globally that once we are able to create the talent in india we'll have a tough time keeping them in india <laughs> another question from dr k maharaja is an associate professor is it true quantum system will replace traditional digital system how and when no they will not replace so i will tell you multiplication we all do multiplication multiplication is faster by at least 100 to a few hundred times faster on your current computers compared to quantum computers so quantum computers are not good for everything they are so just like gpus gpus are accelerators similarly qpus quantum processing units are also accelerators which are good at molecular simulation high energy physics and certain problems but not good at everything for example the multiplication example that i gave you okay uh, so last question uh, how can a undergraduate student get to work in quantum hardware quantum hardware field with electronics background okay how i can answer first um, so in the electronics field okay so the whole control circuitry for the quantum computer is electronics okay and there is a big opportunity for young people who are doing electronics as a field of study to actually contribute in this area and as i said there are going to be a lot of opportunities in the national quantum mission to actually you know go and join as junior research fellows and senior research fellows also in the startup program i am actually mentoring a few startups founders who are looking to build out electronics for quantum computers okay they are looking at using ai to actually build electronics and control systems for quantum computers whether it is iron trap whether it is photonic whether it is uh, superconducting so each one of these the qubit is just one part of the technology to control the qubit to measure it to observe it all those things require you know electronic circuitry and remember if you are using semi you know superconducting these things are sitting inside a fridge okay and that fridge needs to be very very cold so whatever electronics you are putting in there should not be dissipating heat also okay so it is 2 nanometer 5 nanometer technology so all of these things will get built out in india and people who are working in electronics this is a huge huge opportunity for you and as ajay sir said not only for you in here in india you know as i said you know earlier a lot of national quantum missions are going to rely on the skills india generates in this because they don't have those skills and there is going to be worldwide opportunities for people in this one more question in the chat box by dr kartik again yeah. yes sir go ahead please how quantum computing explore transform in biomedicine particularly drug discovery okay so what are we all know what is covid right covid was what our lungs had these receptors shaped something like this and what was covid covid was something which came and sat into it both are proteins okay both are proteins and what did we need we needed a drug which blocked the covid from coming and sitting on that lung you know the the proteins in our lungs so to discover a drug like that you act, how do you do it today you actually take a test tube you pour into the test tube the molecules you observe what is happening then you take what you have developed take it to aims 
give it to 25 people who have COVID and 25 people who don't have COVID. And then you say, okay, how did it go? You know, is, is it effective? Does it have side effects? All of those things. But with quantum, there is an opportunity now to actually simulate these molecular processes in the computer itself. You don't have to take a test tube. You don't have to go and administer these drugs. And that is the opportunity. We can't do it today, but that is the potential of quantum. It gives you that opportunity to do a lot of these molecular processes, which otherwise we cannot simulate. We have to rely on test tubes. We have to rely on people actually taking these drugs. All of that can actually get simulated on a quantum computer. And that is the reason why 34 countries have national quantum missions. And that is the reason why intelligence agencies are advising their you know, governments telling them that you know invest in quantum because if you if we crack this we will have several decades of technological advantage yeah, uh, final last question sir how can one contribute to this nqm who has knowledge in quantum any pathway sir you can answer and then i can add i couldn't understand the question the, the question was how? for a youngster how can they contribute to the national quantum mission? Oh, there are many, many ways. Of course, uh, there are so many research institutes that are involved today, at IITs, IISC, and all of this. They're all involved in creating products for the quantum mission. Of course, it's a long, long haul. And you can join any of these teams if they select you. The other option is to go and intern with a startup. I think that would be a great start for you to get going because there are at least uh, 40, 50 startups, as I told you, and you can go and intern with them and learn quantum computing uh, through them. So that's another way of doing it. Sir, Vangat, sir, do you want to add something? Uh, and of course, uh, sir, the if you are already experienced, this is your chance to startup okay because the national quantum mission is very generously supporting startups also with big sums of money okay which even vcs okay the, the other thing is that there are vcs now in india sitting with 700 million dollar funds india specific funds for deep technologies including quantum okay so for any youngster today there are huge 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 opportunities as sir said whether it is in education, whether it is in, in uh, as joining one of the universities to do the national quantum mission, whether it is industry like IBM, you know, in my team, as I said, we are hiring, or it is founding startups. So all of these opportunities are open to you. And today, as I said, quantum computers are freely available over the internet, over the cloud. So there is no reason, in fact, for you not even to, you know, it's very easy to create an account, write a Hello Quantum World program and get started. There are several videos online which will take you on this journey. So it's very, very easy, actually. Software is an easy way to join in and then get into the hardware also. So that's that's an easy path for any youngster to do. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Venkat, sir, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Ajit Jaudhri, sir. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. K. Gomadi, Chair, CSA Chennai Chapter, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Godfrey. Good evening, all. On the outset, I thank the organizing units jointly arranging this book release event today. We thank all our distinguished guests of today's event, Mr. Ajay Chaudhary, Chairman, Mission Governing Board, National Quantum Mission for spending his valuable time with us today to release the book, Quantum Nation, India Leap into the Future, authored by Mr. Venkata Subramaniam, head IBM Quantum India. My heartfelt thanks goes to Mr. Venkata Subramaniam for his presentation on Quantum Nation, the future of computing, and for clarifying the questions raised by the uh, participants offline and online. Sincerely thank our mentor, Mr. H.R. Mohan, Chair Evans, IEEE uh, Computer Society, Madras, who arranged this book release event for the benefit of the members. I'm thankful to the participants 
who joined us in live Google Meet and YouTube uh, uh, live streaming. I thank the event team members of the organizing units for their continuous support in organizing this event. With these warm words, we move to the end of today's event. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vinkar. Thank you, Mr. Ajay Chaudhary. So it was nice of you to spend so much time with us. Well, I'm wishing Venkat all the best. And I'm thank sure you, his book will be a big bestseller. I would like literally every student in the country to read his book because we want many, many people to learn this technology. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you all. Congratulations, uh, Dr. Venkat. Thank you, sir. Good overview you have given. Very 